On today's episode of Locked On Cubs, we discuss a sweep and not in a good way. The Cubs are swept by the St. Louis Cardinals. We're going to talk about struggling hitters right now, and we're going to talk about bad managing. Stay tuned. I have a lot to say about this guy. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in the Locked On Cubs alongside Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. Pleased to be with you today, even though the Cubs did just get swept to the Cardinals. They are 0-3 on the week. They are 0-3 since the trade deadline, uh, but we are pleased to be with you. Uh, we are closing <laughs> out our, our fifth week as the new host of Locked On Cubs. It has been incredibly enjoyable. It is our privilege Let's just talk about the sweep. to be with you about this club. Okay. okay, the Cubs lose today, not one but two ball games, and uh, 58 games remaining. We're going to get to some of those roster discussion. We're going to get to the Ross discussion. But, Sam, what did you see or not see over the last 10 hours? Well, I'm going to talk about the managerial problems that really stood out in both games, but especially uh, game, game one a little bit later on. So, so, so stay tuned for that. Right. Um, and I, and, and quite frankly, and, 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 you know, people are going to disagree with me and that's the beauty of, of, of this. You are allowed to do that. I am by no means the letter of the law, but I, I feel like every time we lose a ball game, I could come out here and, be, and just roll my eyes at some of the managerial decisions. So stay tuned for that. Cause I, I'm, I'm tired of holding it in. Okay. I'm tired of it. Um, it's ridiculous. Some of the stuff that happens. But as far as the, the the sweep goes today, you know what's weird, Matt? And, and I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. Is it the differences in the lighting in my place? That's weird. <laughs> no, it's not. No, I, oh, I, I feel I like it's a little bit darker. I think we both look a little fatigued, but still handsome. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I, uh, Go I, I'm ahead. Inter- I'm interested if you find this odd. So I'm sitting there watching the second game today, half asleep, and <laughs> – <laughs> I, I'm saying to myself, oh, well, it's it's August. It's the trade deadline. Like, they're supposed to be this bad. But then I realized they didn't trade Contreras, <laughs> and they didn't trade half. The only thing that they have really that they really diluted was their bullpen. They should not be struggling this well, much. Well, the four main today. guys out of the pen. Sure, but that, 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 that had nothing to do with the fact that they scored three runs today or five right. runs, whatever it was. Well, well, I don't know whatever it was. Contreras hit the ball well in the first game, and he's hit the ball well the last two nights. But outside of him, Horner is struggling. You made fun of me when I made fun of him on the on the thing. He's struggling. And, but, and let me just finish real quick. Morell is struggling. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Ian Happ is in a funk. Seiya Suzuki's in a funk. And yes, Matt, the majority of the I understand the majority of these guys are going to start hitting again. And of course, it doesn't matter right now because the team's bad. But one thing to look at next year, and I don't follow the rest of the teams like I do the Cubs, obviously, but when every, when pretty much every hitter is in a little funk, that creates a big funk, right? So yeah. of course, of course, Nico Horner is going to start hitting again, and he's not in a terrible funk. I think he had two hits in the first game, but but when everybody's in a little bit of a funk, somebody's got to step up. And I'll just say this, and I'll swing it over to you. Just talking about the offense, you know, Suzuki is having the exact same thing that happened to him at the beginning of the year. Great start, followed by it's just like. Eh. Like what's happened? Eh, you know these at bats. Eh, you know so you're kind of you're just it's just a sh- shoulder shrug. Yeah, it just feels like his at bats aren't aren't high quality right now. Um, okay. I don't, I can't. You know, he, he's not striking out a ton. He's hitting the ball on the ground a little bit more than he did in the beginning of the year. I still think he's going to hit, but I just don't want him. I don't want. I need. We need more consistent hitters on this team. Contreras is streaky. Half streaky. Wisdom streaky. You know, I, I want Seiya Suzuki to be one of those guys. Of course, you're going to have slumps, but. Um, you know, to, to, to try and just limit them a little bit because I, I I don't know what the numbers are, but it feels like since he hit that home run in Pittsburgh, it's been pretty ugly against Pittsburgh. It's been pretty ugly. And then I'll just lastly see Christopher Morrell going through a classic young player slump. I think he's 0 for his last 20. The first part of that 0 for, 0 for 10, he looked great. 
he was hitting the ball well. And then you look up, the average is starting to slip down. It starts to get in your head and you start getting yourself in bad habits and you look up. That's why I, I always can't stand when announcers say, oh, well, he's hitting the ball well. If he just stays there, he'll be fine. No, sometimes mentally you need results. You know, you need results because it wears on you a little bit. So I think he'll snap out of it um, this weekend. But man, just a lot of, you know, there's a lot of bad today. But to me, what just stood out the most outside of the manager was just a lot of, just a lot of lazy at bats. And I know Michaelis is a good pitcher. And, you know, Quintana's dominated us like four times this year. And oh, by the way, another lefty where Ross runs out all righties and we struggle again. That's Alex Wood. That's Carlos Rodon. That's Jose Quintana. Three straight lefties that have shoved against us. The Cubs played 18 innings today. They scored five runs. Which of those five was your favorite? <laughs> Three, one, two. Eight three four four six three four. I'll take the I'll take one of the runs in that rally there uh, in game one when I actually thought they were going to win when they had a little Suzuki action, a little hit and run by Horner. Well, I just wrote down highlights from each ball game, and it's just so meager. I mean, here's oh, literally it's... what I have. I'm just going to read them to you. Yeah. Game one, Horner two for four, comma <laughs> Suzuki one for four. With RBI and a stolen base. That's Contreras, it. Contreras, game, Contreras. Contreras had a good no, game. Oh, sorry. I, the caveat is yeah. I'm looking at 2023. Right, right. I understand. Don't know if if Contreras is going to be around. Yeah, it's, okay? up, to, yeah, it's up to him. Yeah. Game two. Game two. Got here's a nap my in. Note. Here's Fourth my inning. Note. <laughs> yeah. 35 minute nap. Feel refreshed. Going to make it to 11. <laughs> Jeez. What Can you imagine game. journaling during the Cubs season? Best, best, best 9.37 of the- <laughs> p.m., another double play ball. <laughs> best part of that baseball game today was Nelson Velasquez putting in a good A.B. against that fireball in Hicks and hitting his foot. Great. Well, that's what I that's what I have on my list. Yeah. Exciting. Wisdom, 20th homer and two walks, comma. Velasquez, one for two with an RBI and a walk. Good A.B.s, and that's pretty much it. Nice, nice uh, debut from Castro out of the pen. Why did he get a chance to? I'm sorry. Let me say. I'll say it. For, why did he have to face O'Neill? I mean, come on. It's his first right. time. He was gat. Just what, what, oh, do I, I? I got a lot to say about this. About the management of the ball. I am teams. really. I really think, and, and I know people love Rossi, and I know people. Well, I, I really think that this team. You know. So there's a lot, a lot of room there. Are grow. you? Going to discuss Strowman later, or can I do that now? I, 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 he's a, a large part of of what I was going to talk about the manager, but he, you is, talking okay. about, he, was, he was fantastic. You could say what you want about okay. him. Okay, I, I will because no I will say the today. the pitching in the first game. Oh, he was great. Was good. I mean, Strowman was masterful through five. Then he yeah, started he, to run into a wall. Obviously, the seventh inning was awful. Um, six and two thirds, five hits, three runs, zero walks. No, he pitched six he's been, Ks. He's been great. He, he's been um, great since he's been back. There. And I, I was no having a conversation with someone today about Strowman and twenty three expectations. Dude, you got to pitch. Yeah, he just needs to. If be you're healthy. not the number two, you're the number one. Yeah, no, he just needs to be healthy. If you're not the number one, you're the number two, depending on free agency. So. Um, you know, that was, that was fun to watch. And glad and, we started Sean Newcomb tonight. Yeah. What was the point well, of that? But see Sam, but you're going to have these games though. But why we have, there's, there's Steele, Thompson, Smiley, Samson, Stroman, uh, uh, Miley's coming back soon. Hendricks is coming back soon. There was nobody else we could put out there. That's just a bit intriguing. I don't know. I think it was a buffer game. Hey, we got to get through today's game. Ugh. And know, you know, Matt, know. I'll, I'll just wrap up by saying this. Yeah. I, I, it's the fan in me. It's very hard. Like, like today, huge, huge day for Canario, my boy, three for four. Oh. PCA, huge day. Killian threw the ball well. There's so much good happening on the lower levels of this organization, but the, 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 the eight year old in me cannot, I can't just sit there and watch, and, and I know it doesn't matter. And, and, and they stink. And what is, I mean, what does it matter if they lose? A hundred games or ninety games, it doesn't matter. Right. But 
it's just who I am. I, I getting swept by the Cardinals. It's just irritating. It's just irritating. Yeah. It impacts my mood. Uh, the, you know, that, that, that second game felt like I was at the dentist office, you know, where it's like, Oh, I have to be here. Um, you know, but I don't want to be, I don't want to be, it's, it's, it's grueling. It's long. It's painful for me at times. Cause I, I, I drink a lot of pop, um, you know, and I don't floss. <laughs> Uh, that's a great analogy. Very fair. Felt like a dentist office. You know what else is fair? How about some jewelry? Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. Whether it's wedding jewelry or everyday fine jewelry, Blue Nile has an anniversary sale right now just for you. Save up to 40% on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25% on engagement ring settings. Plus, Every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever piece of jewelry bling. Go to BlueNile.com today. David Ross Uh, is in his third season as Cubs manager. Chopping it up. There is a lot of discussions that we have had off air. Oh. There's been some that we have poked at a little bit on the air in in close to 30 episodes of this program now. And I think there's still going to be time. I mean, we know there's going to be time, but there's going to be even more thoughts that we could build out um, moving forward. But as we zoom in on today's game, Sam. Egregious. Today was egregious. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, Like, there's certain things, Matt, you could pick at. Today, to me, was egregious. And I'll explain why. Okay. So Marcus Stroman, and, and by the way, I'm loosely watching this game because I was doing other stuff. I wasn't like super locked in. And, and then I, I made sure when I came back, I, I re-watched the sequence. Mm-hmm. So Stroman, I believe it was the fifth inning, calls out the training staff. Okay. Says after the game, he 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 was a little bit lightheaded, some right. cramping. He 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 doesn't he doesn't eat a lot before it starts because he's amped up, he's anxious. I'm the same way. When I'm anxious about something, I'm not a big eater, right? Like I like to just settle in. So sometimes if it's a really hot afternoon game, he gets a little bit, you know, he doesn't have as much food in his system. So he wasn't feeling the greatest. Okay. Also keep in mind, this is still like his only his fourth or fifth start back from injury. He hadn't really pitched that much. He's True. dominating fully fine with him coming out for the seventh inning. No issues there. Wouldn't have pulled him. That's just, if you say you should have pulled him before the seventh, that's just being hindsight. Cause he, he was dominating. He starts out the seventh. He gives up a home run to Nolan Gorman. Okay. At that point, at that point, somebody has got to get up. Okay, somebody's got to get up immediately, if not, if not it's, already having somebody up. It's only a two-run game. Yeah, it's only a two-run game. Then here's the telltale to me that Strowman is cooked. He goes 0-2 to 3-2 to Goldschmidt. He didn't have trouble putting getting early contact and early outs or putting people away all day. And then Goldschmidt hits a homer. Okay. That's where, okay, mound visit, right? Yep. Uh, um, um, stall, make sure, I think it was Brandon Make sure Hughes. the umpire comes out to the mound. Yeah, right. He, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then Arenado hits a rocket double, okay? And then I can't remember exactly after that. I think it was DeYoung hits a ground ball right side. Arenado gets the third. Then a lefty's up. I think it was Newt Bar. Again, I was loosely watching this, so don't, don't kill, crush me if, I, if it's wrong. Brandon Hughes is up. It's a lefty. Whoever it was, uh, he's got to come in the game. He's got to come in the game to face the lefty. Strowman is done. They leave Strowman in. He faces the guy. I can't remember exactly who it was. If it was, if it had to have been Nude Bar, maybe it was whatever. Um, gives up a sack fly. Game's tied at three. Again, would that have run probably scored anyway? Yes. But to me, Matt, it's just the process of it. It just tells me that David Ross doesn't know what's going on sometimes, okay? And maybe his response is, well, we just wanted to ride out Strowman. Game's not important to us. Fine. If that's the case and you do a better job when the games matter, then I'll, I'll come up here and, and be the first one to say it. But to have Brandon Hughes up, and to not have him ready to face a lefty, and to not have him on call ready to go when you know your ace pitcher has already struggled physically in this game with some lightheadedness, it's really hot, just on call ready, hey, you know what, what if he 
What if he has another bout of that? It's getting late. It's a seventh inning. It's a, and like you said, the most important part is it's a really tight game. And you know you're only going to have an opportunity probably to win one of these games. So don't give me this you-know-what. Oh, well, we wanted to stretch out Strowman because we didn't want to hurt our bullpen of the double header. That's what the 27th man's for. You, you, you could put him out there mm-hmm. uh, two, three innings when you're getting beat down in this game, game two anyway. It's egregious, okay? It's just a, he, the way he manages pitchers is egregious. Now, on to the second game. No reason for Castro to be in that long to face O'Neal. It's like, okay, I get it. Let's sample, give an experiment. But the game's tied at that point. First and third, two outs. He's tired. Bring somebody in. He already got a double play ball. It's uh, a heck of you- a time for an experiment. Yeah, right. A heck of a time for experiment. Now you heard his confidence, a young kid. Um, and then again, I've mentioned this a lot on this show. Stop starting all righties against a left-handed pitcher. Yeah, I don't J- get it. JD said on the air when he was a lefty, he yeah. loved facing all righties because it got him in a momentum with his pitch, his pitch sequence. I don't know the, 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 the 162 stats on the Cubs on lefties. They have a lot of guys individually who are lefties, but they should not be getting dominated by Jose Quintana and Alex Wood. They just shouldn't be. Rodon's fine, but those two, they shouldn't be. You know, right. if you have a lefty that you like, let's see if somebody can hit one. You know what I mean? Let Hap, just let yeah. somebody. How do we Jeez. know? <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just, oh my goodness. It's just, I just haven't seen a lot this year. There's a lot of problems with this team. David Ross is not number one. But 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 in the 2023 campaign will be his judging time, uh, and I think fans will start to notice the things that I notice. Okay, well that's a good tease and preview for further discussion for sure. And um, what do you I, think about Ross? Because 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 I know, think that's a great vent session right there. By the way, yeah, it's just annoying, and and and, and I'm just making sure I'd like to hear what you say. And, yeah, and, and do a little filibuster for me because I'm making sure I got the sequence right in the yeah uh, in the seven. yeah do that do that. I think that. Newt Bar hit the sack fly. I was right. It was it yeah, was it yeah, was yeah, yeah. Gorman, Goldschmidt, Arenado, DeYoung, Newt Bar, and then Corey Dickerson was up, and that's when uh, that's when Hughes was brought in, and they pinched hit O'Neill. It's just bad managing. So, even if I were to say, you know, to you, Sam, well, was Hughes? Do we know a hundred percent that Hughes was ready to face a big league hit- hitter in that spot? Well. That just circles back to the original point. Yeah, he's got to be up. He's got to be ready. Right. Because when you look at the, the batting order and you look at the situation you, you have in the two game. two straight lefties coming up. Yeah. And you realize that at that point in a game, a major league game, up only one or two, it's just batter to batter. Yeah. If the, if the game was 3 nothing at that point, let's say there was 2-1, two 2-out exactly. two for the exactly. lefty, Hughes right. is still coming into me. Oh, because still? Because I'm, I'm not – yeah, yeah, you I, gotta be ready for it, right? Yeah, no, no, because I, I, I don't feel the need to stretch out Marcus Stroman at all. Like I just the, let's just no. let him just get through this year healthy. So I'm, I'm saying if it's a three nothing game, first and second, two out for Newt Bar, I go to Hughes right there. And le- unless in my head I'm thinking I'd rather have Stroman v Newt Bar than um, Hughes v O'Neill. Okay, that makes sense. But uh, uh, if they pitch, yeah. It. But I just think I just think no. Stroman's when you have that not back- a guy to stretch out. When you have back-to-back lefties like that, Hughes, you, there had to there had to been a call before the inning. Hey, if we get to these lefties, make sure Hughes is ready. All right, let's go. Right. No, it's just it's just it's so easy. my 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 response is okay, especially you know, kind of feeling that feeling it from the coaching perspective as well. Is there always has to be a plan, and as a always. manager, you have to manage the situation. Just make the call. Make the call. What? What what is the problem with him warming up? If right. Strowman gets out of it, okay, right. But the and guy needs to be ready because hitter to, it's a hitter hitter sport. And I don't, I just want to know what David Ross does well as a manager so far this year. And okay. and, and and please refrain from saying the guys play hard for him. It's one of the most Ooh. sorry excuses. Uh, the, the, with the uh, money these guys get paid, they should be playing hard. If I'm managing, okay. So don't give me that. I want to know, does he manage the pitching staff? Well, I don't think so. Does he Does he put together a lineup that makes sense consistently? It's much better now. It took him months to figure that out. Does the team – is the team fundamentally sound? I don't think so. They, they, they're they not very good base running. Just because they're aggressive on the base paths doesn't mean they're a good base running team. I don't know yeah. what they do. You know, we, we, know. We'll, we will discuss Ross more in future episodes. I will I say know. the batting order thing – was like the first really bad sign of this season. You know, you the first like, two you, you or didn't three like Jason weeks, Hayward in the middle of the lineup, huh? No, 
And Suzuki was hitting literally seventh for like three <laughs> weeks. And he was doing real well. Ortega will be in the leadoff spot today. We're going to talk about this roster coming up next. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including all things baseball, as we are about to hit the stretch run of the season. Head to BetOnline.net or download the app to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. You know, let me just say a couple quick positives Um, because everyone always gets on me for being negative. I I, I don't know how I'm supposed to come on here and be super positive after a week like this. So, you know, I'm sorry. Um, uh, Justin Steele's going tomorrow. That's always fun. I'm excited. And man, did man did Strowman pitch well? I mean, he, he did, was yeah. really sharp until that 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 part of it. I mean, he looked, you know. And, and by the way, some of these teams that he's looked really sharp against since he's come back from injury, Dodgers, right. Giants. Yeah, Cardinals. that's important to look at too. Yeah, yeah. He, he he's he's quality of opponent, strength of schedule. Yeah, yeah. He's he's done he, he's done his his job here. It's a shame that he his ERA was back to a really respectable number until that till that uh that three run inning so and 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 and, and you know it, it's been a weird road to get there but wisdom looks like he's going to hit 27 28 home runs mm-hmm. um you know his his defense hasn't been great lately but you know i mean that, that's one swap the cubs made you t- you look at what chris bryant's doing over there in denver uh, you know, since Patrick Wisdom has been a cub, I think he's out homered him by like 40 homers. <laughs> well, yeah, KB just doesn't play enough. Right, exactly. He hasn't played enough. And Wisdom right. is where I want to start the last part of the show, Sam, because yes. I think he's going to switch up the corner of the field most of the rest of the year. Uh, I think he's going to start playing more first. Yeah, so Bodie got option today. It's his last option. He still owed a bunch of money. Um, so he's, he's one gonna, of the only guaranteed players through twenty three. Yeah, yeah. So he, that, that's interesting. Like he's probably going to be a part of this. You know, we talked about this yesterday. Madrigal, who actually had he, he was over. Is that he actually had some good at bats today? He was like working good. counts and taking pitches, which was weird to see. Um, Madrigal, McKinstry, Morell, Bodie, Horner, right. Schwindel, Rivas, Wisdom. I mean, there's just a log jam Too many on the infield right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I would say I think Schwindel is pretty close to getting DFA'd. And I tweeted it out today. It's so. like a year ago, he's the talk of the town, right? Well, he and was he, just starting his run, right? Yeah, and, and a year later, you know, and it's hard. I mean, it's just hard. I mean, he he was – he seems like like the greatest guy in the world. But, you know, the at-bats – he had a stretch when he had when he got sent down and came back up where he was starting to hit better, but the the at bats are just so bad. Like to, it's just how many times has he ground into a double play with two men on in the last month? It's at least right. four or five. I mean, those are killers. Like that, that's one thing, and I, I, I'm getting on my soapbox a little bit, but I, I think it's important to have these episodes because I, I want people to you know know where I'm coming from. That's one thing that like the saber metrics don't show you. No. An 0 for 1 with a double play with the bases loaded and one out is a lot bigger of an out than just 0 for 1. It might be your best opportunity of the game, right? You know, you can you can go 2 for 4. It's drastic. With, no, with nobody on and two outs, you get a couple infield hits, and your two outs that you make are with the bases loaded. It's not a good baseball game. Right. Um, now, don't be wrong. It's not like Frank Schwindel's uh, numbers are, are flattering by any means. But it's just, it's just, I really pay attention to these big spots at games. And man, he has really struggled. I, I think there was a stat a, a week or two ago that he has like some of the most at bats in the league with runners in scoring position. Um, Isn't that and, incredible? Yeah. So he struggled. What else? What other roster spots? The well, McKinstry I, I was... Madrigal thing is going to be a fun battle to watch. Yeah. And it looks like McKinstry is going to play. Mean, really boring. It looks like McKinstry. <laughs> Well, I think the other domino here is just the less time for Ortega thing. Um, and I'd like then, to see Velasquez play more. You know, he's yeah, he, center he's, or left. Yeah, maybe not Actually, center. Any of the three spots. Yeah, maybe not center. But oh, then again, we don't really have a center fielder. That's correct. One thing. Correct. That's that's one thing in twenty three that has to be fixed. If PCA and Davis or whoever, please get a center fielder that's above average defensively. Ortega made a great catch today. It was probably the best catch I've ever seen him make in the first game. Right, but man, we not catch. We don't catch enough balls out there. 
Well, McKinstry, you know, is he going to play third the last 58 games more often than not? Is he going to play second? Can he, How about Morrell play? play third? Well, I – Has so it happened ever? Morrell at third and, and, and Velasquez in center. That's something I'd like to see happen more. Okay. And then I'd like to see Happ at DH and Frazier in left. Yeah, right. And you know, you could you 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 could spell a day or two here. Get get Higgins some first base. Higgins, right? You know that that's where I think it's going to go with Schwindel. I think it's going to be like a Higgins and Wisdom at first. Get Morell some time at third. Okay. Uh, situation, but can you see any yeah. roster moves before tomorrow's game? Well, what's interesting is like, are they just going to fake the the Hayward injury the whole year? Like, just call it like it is. I that's think a fake, so. That, that's a fake injury. Like, I'm sorry. Like, and I, I, I'm not at all questioning Jason Hayward's toughness. It's not his decision. I know that. I know that. But come on, like knee and like, what are we talking about here? Like, he's it's like, trending. He, it's trending in that way that he's going to miss the rest of the year. Yeah, and then Simmons too. Uh, he's been playing at Iowa the last. Oh, few he's days. been playing. Okay. Yeah. Because, because, like, are you going to bring up Andrews and Simmons? Is that necessary? No. Yeah. No. It's just. It's just. It's a very. It's a very jumbled forty, crunch of just really mediocre. It's players. a little messy right now. Yeah, and um, what's unfortunate is outside of Contreras and even his numbers, nobody like we. we there were some really good standout seasons. You know, you look at the standout yeah. years. You know, Contreras still is an 830 OPS, and at the catcher position, that's really high. I'm not gonna talk, we're not going to go down that road. We've talked a lot about Contreras. But we got 35, 36 RBIs from him. Um, right, Hap's right. O- OPS is shot down. I think it's down to like 784. Some teams that, that probably said no to Jed Hoyer on, on the Hap deal are, are laughing their way a little bit. Um, Suzuki's numbers are coming down. You know, uh, we, here we, we go. Need, we need somebody. I, I just, you know, I just want something to be excited about. Well, what, but what it- Go the ahead, minor sorry. league, the minor league club. I mean, PCA. Well, look, yeah, and I, the, I think look you at brought the catch it up earlier. Today. I think as a fan, you we do peek at that more. We do talk about it a little more. Hey, yeah. Killian did this. PCA did that. Man, did he make a catch in center field today? So, he looked like Jim Edmonds. What's What's it going to take for you to wear the Horner jersey for Monday's episode? A win. Just one out of the three against. Oh the no! Marlins? Oh, because oh, we're coming out because we'll record Sunday. Two out of three. Two out of three, a series Something victory. good has to happen. I can't, I'm not, you know me. Right. I, I, you know, don't forget, folks, I was, I had my Kool-Aid. I had, I had my hat. I had my broom. When we were I rolling, there was, there was nobody happier than we me. We were living was, large. Yeah, but when, when we, when we play like this, how about that playing center today? Uh, uh, I think it was Morell's a simple base hit to center. I think Newt Bar, just easy, get to second base. I, I hate to sound It's old bad school. baseball. I just hate that stuff. I just hate it. Of course. You know, you're not a good team. Play the game right at least. Right. Right. Are we the worst team in the league at pop-ups? Yes. Okay. Be sure to hit the subscribe button for Locked On Cubs on YouTube. As of this recording, we're inside 30 subscribers. Would love to get over 1,000 before we start a new week on Monday. And smash the like button on all our Cubs content. Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, you can drop us a text, 312-834-4634. Thanks for making Locked On Cubs your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, the Locked On MLB podcast. Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, unique perspective on every team, and the biggest stories around the league. I am going to look a little bit different for Monday's episode. We are saying goodbye to the stash. And it's going to get better, folks. It's going to get better. We're going to be a better baseball team, and I'll be positive when that happens. But until then, let me vent. Absolutely. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked on Cubs.